Sunday of just a cappella old hymns. Amen. And the thing is, is that it gets us back to the understanding that if the music and if all the electronics stopped, we still going to sing praises Amen. unto our God. Amen. Amen. We're not always raised in traditions with fine buildings and fine spaces, but we always had a desire to worship the Lord in song. And so what I'm saying is, please, as this train comes by new, in this new age, get on board. Amen. Amen. Amen? We need all of your talents and all of the efforts you have to the best. Just get on board. All hearts and minds ready to give. Let us prepare to do so. Amen. Amen. That we face in our communities with still the reality of knowing that streets are not as safe as they once might have been. Amen. And it seems to be getting worse in certain areas. However, in some communities, it hasn't changed. Only difference is, is that much of the craziness of this world has now moved 
to Midtown and to Uptown. Whereas for some of our neighborhoods, this is simply the way it's been when you live south of town. And the burden and the pain and the hurt is now being felt in different ways. But now we also see where there's going to be a penalty phase that's odd when parents lose young children and gang violence, and, and let's face it, that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, that's simply what it is. It has not changed, it's been undercurrently dealt with in different ways, and, and I know everyone thinks now the answer is to, I mean, everyone has an answer, and that's fine too. We gotta use all of our resources, but the reality is there has to be one change, and it first needs to be of the heart. It's an amazing dynamic that I know that there were times in my life whenever I was trying to just fix it myself, I was constantly making more a mess of it, whatever it was at that particular time. But when I could just find the fact that I can't and I knew someone who could or who could carry me through the could process, that's where a relationship with God really does begin to make changes. I've said this in the past. And for those who don't seem to understand, the ultimate element of racism is when a dynamic of a people begin to look at themselves with no value whatsoever. Yeah. Where you can see someone that looks just like you and pull a trigger and, and use the most scandalous names of that other person who actually looks very much like yourself. When we get to that point, we become desensitized to the humanity that's around us, but at the same time we bought in to the stratification of some people's lives are worth more than others. Mm. And then we play these political games, which if you haven't voted, I need to tell you, please go out and do so. Uh, just prepare to have comfortable shoes, bring your own bottle of water, uh, have your phone on mute when you get inside the building, turn it off completely, take the earbud out your ear because we need you to vote this time around. Yeah. This is a statement on the souls of black people in the modern age. This is what they think we look like and who we are, and this is what we need to let them know we're better than. So please do whatever you need to do to get out and vote. I'm saying all these things because as we prepare to go to the altar, some of us just want cute prayers. Lord, give me what I want. Lord, I just want to give you something, and I want you to double my fold and give me a whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, sometimes these prayers that we pray are simply, Lord, I'm hurting. Mm -hmm. Our communities are hurting. Our yeah. seniors are hurting. Our young folks are hurting. And we don't really have the words, but we need to lay it at the altar. Yeah. And here today, as I read these names, our, our prayers are with each one of you. Brother Viney, knowing that you've got a surgery that's coming up here real soon, is that correct? Our prayers are with you. Our prayers are with you. Good to see you here, Sister Minor. Amen. And I know that you, and as I see Mother Saxton, it's good to see Mother Alston. It's good to see Mother Swain. It's just good to see each of you. But each of you also deals with a lot of the burden. I know Mother Croom is, is going through some physical challenges as well. Our prayers are with you because we know that your task as mothers is to be the ones in the church that when we forget what words of prayer are, yours need to be continued up to God for the rest of us. But right now we have you on our prayer list. And even as I consider our deacons and all of those who are here, I'll just read down the list. Mother Ida Alston, Flora Carter, Emma Evans, Deacon Jimmy Evans. Please do keep Emma Evans in your prayers. Uh, Ella Gorgla, Brandy Hall, Edwin Howard, Latrice Howard, Mary Howard, Teron Howard, William Howard, Carter Jackson, Derek Jackson, who's still on the mend, and just being Derek, I reckon. Jasmine Jackson, but it's good to see you. <laughs> Sister Roxanne Jackson, Annie Ruth Lee, Hosea Lee, Jason Lee, India McLean, Esther McDougall, Pamela Michelle, Marvin Pops, Patrick, Brittany Polidor, Don Polidor, good to see you all, Reverend Magdalene Smith, Christina Woodruff, Stephanie Woodruff, and if I've neglected any names that might need to be added to the list, if you just want to say a name right now, anybody that I might have missed, who? Keith the 
some good, keeps good food. <clears throat> Amen. Anyone else? King family. The King family. Amen. Anyone else? The what? The Peters family. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. And you know the beauty of church worship is when you get off being stuck to the program, you just get out of the way and let God have that space. Orlando Jones. Mando Jones. Amen. Anyone else? Who's that? Don Bell. Don Bell. Anyone else? Ann Naylor. Who Ann Naylor? Yes. Anyone else? The Giles family. Amen. Anyone else? I didn't hear you. Caden Brown. Caden Brown. Amen. The grand. Yeah, the little one. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Glory Viney. Corey Viney. Amen. Anyone else? I don't think it's too selfish. I'm the one asking. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And I'm going to turn it over to someone who can fix it. Yeah. Brown. Jane Brown family. Jane Brown family. Amen. Lisa Swain. Lisa Swain. Lisa Swain, amen. Any others? Mother Ogden? I think it was that one of those I'm asking for prayer of myself situations. Lord, while on others thou art called, do not pass me by. Who was that? Bill Peters. And Betty Jackson. Bill Peters, Betty Jackson. Andrea Hall. Andrea Hall. William Thomas. William Johnson. William family. William family. Oh, the Williams family. Amen. The Williams family. Amen. Any others? The Croom family. The Croom family. Yes. Good to see you both this morning. But yes, 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 yes. Any others? Face slaughter. Face slaughter. Amen. Great and new light. Great and new light. Yes. Our community. Yes. Amen. Your family or everybody else's family? Amen. 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 Any specifics? Amen. Our prayers are with you. And I'm not going to say much in the prayer, but I want your heart to be right just to be able to say, Lord, we got to give it to you. Once again, many of the names that are called, we do know. Many of the situations we might know. The reality is many of the situations we'll never know. And when we look at the collective ask of God upon the community, that's just constant. But we do serve a God who does hear and answer the prayers of the righteous. And I'm asking that you fill that gap right now with your heart's intent. Let us go to God in prayer. And so, Father, it is in the name of Jesus. I hear you clearly, Lord. When you've spoken to the disciples, I hear you right now, Lord, that our Father which art in heaven. Mm -hmm. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day mm -hmm. our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Dear Lord, as you gave us these instructions, you made it clear to us. Mm -hmm that we are to acknowledge who you are. You are our Father. You are our maker and our provider. You are the one who will watch over us, who will hear and answer our prayers. Yes. You let us know in that prayer, dear Lord, we ought to thank you for what you've already done. We, we acknowledge that we have all that we have because of your goodness. And dear Lord, to deal with those things that are not in the goodness category, we still need to know it's you who will safely guide us through those ugly spaces of life. Mm -hmm. For some of us, dear Lord, we're going through some health challenges and financial challenges and relationship challenges in our communities. People don't trust like they used to. Dear Lord, we're going through so much. And what I'm asking in the name of Jesus, that in this space of so much, mm -hmm. that you hear the names of those who've been called. Yes, sir. That you receive the names of those that are on the sick and prayer list. Mm -hmm. For those who've got surgeries coming up. For those who've got family situations that have been mentioned. Dear Lord, if the name has been called, is somebody needing you to move on their behalf. Right. And 
in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm asking that if they could call a name that they have faith enough to believe that you can provide an answer. Mm -hmm. And so, dear Lord, I'm asking that you cover those. Mm -hmm. Keep those. But also bless those who spoke out on behalf of somebody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's a constant reminder that as others have a need, we share in helping to provide that need. All right. And so we bring these names, we bring these situations, we bring these burdens, we bring it all to the altar right now. Yes. Somebody didn't want anyone to have the name called. They didn't want anybody to know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. But somebody else spoke the name, and I'm asking the Lord that they just simply know that whatever you're going through, stop trying to manage it yourself. Right. Just let somebody else every once in a while pray for you. Just let somebody else every once in a while help to hold you up, help to sustain you. And then just know also you can just let God have it completely. But at the same time, let somebody else be there with you through it all. Right. We're not alone. Yeah. And so, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, whatever these issues are, mm -hmm. We leave them with you right now. Right. The needs are greater than our small list can collect. And dear Lord, we know there's so many issues around in our neighborhood and in our homes and in our families and on our jobs and in our schools and in our politics and in our land. There's so many needs, dear Lord, but we're just going to leave it all with you this morning. Mm -hmm. Because in your word and that prayer, you let us know for thou art the kingdom mm -hmm. and the power. And the glory okay. forever mm -hmm. and ever. Yes. We leave it with you, O oh God, here and answer our prayers. Oh, yeah. We trust in you. Yes, Amen. 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 knowing that God does hear and answer prayer. Amen. But even when you go through some difficult moments, it don't hurt to just praise Him every once in a while.
Saturday template now because many of the choir members have gotten a little older and it gets dark so early. <laughs> we just don't, that would be a, a phone call I just wouldn't want to receive. So that's why we're looking to make some changes in those areas. Now, I will say that I know that choir, I mean Bible study, 
is going to an online template. However, however, as I've said in the past and I'll say it again, I will be here for a Bible study. It is just me and a camera and no one else. I've said the same during the COVID period that there's some <laughs> folks who just need to get out the house and just need to get away. And so we are going to still be here uh, from that 6.30 to 7.30 time frame uh, because I don't know about you because I can't see myself effectively teaching Bible study at the house with Sister Jones knocking on the door every few minutes asking me what I'm doing in the room. Well, I got the door closed and the dog up there trying to lick your hand. That's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. But we are so grateful. And so we do want to take advantage of the time that we have and and let us judicious be judicious with it. Today, today, what we simply want to do is make sure that we talk about the burden of something that we fairly don't want to consider much. Let's look at the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 27. The book of Matthew, chapter 27. Our prayers are with each of you, for we know also the truest reality is that as others are going through ups and downs, it might not be you directly, but it does impact you directly. Mm -hmm. And so our prayers are with each of you here this morning. But there is something that we in the church don't speak much of, and it's something that needs to be considered. Let us stand, if you have it, Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Starting at verse number one. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius, Pilate, the governor. Verse number three is where I want us to keep our focus, three and four. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and bought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, mm -hmm. saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Mm -hmm. And they said, what is that to us? Mm -hmm. See thou to it. Mm -hmm. I want to talk for just a few minutes from the idea of the burden of sin. Mm -hmm. The burden of sin. Mm -hmm. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you make your words clear, that you make your words direct, that you make your words plain, and dear Lord, let me not get in the way, but let the message be bold in knowing that there is a burden that comes when we make decisions outside of your will. Mm -hmm. Now, dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, and my friend. Mm -hmm. Let your word go forth. This I pray in thy son's name. Amen. Amen. The burden of sin, the burden of sin. So the first thing, someone sits here and thinks at this very moment, this first Sunday, we are in the uh, uh, Christmas, beginning of the Christmas season, and we wonder why is the pastor dealing with this issue of sin at this point? Isn't this something that should be relegated to Easter time? What is the purpose? Yeah. Well, well, the purpose simply is this, is that regardless of how we look at the Christian calendar, Everything that was done for us was done because of the burden of sin. Yeah. Sin was the burden that was laid upon us from the Garden of Eden, from the decisions of Adam and of Eve. That these, these, these going contrary to the will of God, motions and actions and thoughts and deeds that we have as a human creation, they cause us to now have 
a prerequisite penalty that comes along with it. You do something, something's going to happen. It amazes me with some of our children nowadays, and I and I have to tell you, I'm I'm, I'm a, I, I wasn't one who would do something up the street and and would get uh, whoopings by other folks because I'm sorry that just wasn't happening with us. For one, you ain't gonna catch me. Uh, if I done something that bad, I'm running from or to. And it ain't people that don't need to lay hands on me. I'm not that one. Nowadays, put your hands on somebody else's kid, we're going to have some squabbles. And so the reality is, is that the notion of sin in our community has taken some changes over, over the years. It used to be an issue where you cannot, honestly, as we've dealt with here this past week, you cannot completely lay the burden of sin on one who pulls a trigger and at the same time, try to take it off of them because they're innocent. There's a burden. There's a burden. There's a burden when you affiliate with folks who you know are going to do wrong and you get caught on the crossfire. Mm -hmm. There is simply that burden. And it's a burden that we don't want to hear about, but we have to evidence in our own churches, in our own spaces, in our own lives. Here in our text, we're at the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. He is now, he is now, now in a situation where the chief priests and the elders uh, and of the people have taken counsel against Jesus and they've decided that they want to simply put Jesus to death. They've laid hands on him throughout the night and they've also incarcerated him and, and they buffeted him, meaning they beat him up a little bit and they decided we're going to do what we're going to do. And they turned him over to Pontius Pilate, who was going to who was the governor, who was going to label the statement of guilty of heresy. Guilty of preaching a gospel against their God. Which didn't make any sense because if they realized that he was God in an incarnate form, you can only be what you are. However, we know that's a part of the dilemma. They did not care that he was the fulfillment of prophecies from a Jewish perspective. Mm. So here we find when in the morning they said we're going to kill Jesus. Right. Well, they, they found even then something that I want you to know even today that when folk really want to get at you, all they got to do is find somebody in the family. <laughs> All they got to do is find somebody that, you know, you know, I think the OJ said it, they smile in your face. <laughs> but all the time they want to take your place. Yeah. Ow! The backstabbers. <laughs> and so they were looking for that one, that weak link uh -huh. that they could use in Jesus' inner circle mm. to get to Jesus. They found a weak link. A fellow by the name of Judas. Mm -hmm. It is clear that Judas was the money keeper. Mm -hmm. Trustees. <laughs> <laughs> it is clear that money was the motive by which Judas operated because we find really no, no real clear ministry done in the in the, in the uh, Gospels that Judas had actually participated in. Even when money was being used for the mothers and the widows and the homeless and the children, even Judas was the one who would raise a question and ask, why are we spending so much? <laughs> Here we find that Judas had one central purpose was to keep the money, and apparently he kept it well. But Jesus knew because he actually had invited him to be a part of his inner circle. Jesus must have known that there was something in Judas because, and I have to say this theologically, we'll talk about it one day. I needed Judas to do what he did because if Judas hadn't done it, I would need somebody to do it to fulfill scripture. But also, somehow, at the end of the day, I, I needed Jesus out there on yonder's cross. Or maybe my salvation wouldn't have been paid for. Right. I know that sounds selfish, but that's a sermon for another day. Let's just look right now at the burden of sin. And so Judas is now knowing that Jesus is going before Pontius Pilate. Verse number three, Judas, who was the one who had said in the Garden of Gethsemane, there he is. Mm -hmm. He took them right to Jesus while he was praying mm -hmm. and said, there he is right there. Mm -hmm. Jesus Kisses his own, kisses him on the cheek. And 
tries to let them know it's all right, brother. Mm -hmm. You could have did better, but you couldn't help yourself. Mm -hmm. Jesus did what he could to make Judas feel all right, but still, and as much as Jesus does his part to make the guilty one feel better, there still is a burden of sin. Mm -hmm. And so here in our text, when Judas finds that Jesus is to be now a condemned man, Judas, as it says in verse number 30, I mean, verse number 3, he repented himself. They paid him 30 pieces of silver. He threw it at them and said, I'm not taking this blood money. They said, that's not our problem. That's already a debt paid. We got what we wanted because you took what you wanted. You've already done the deed. The sin has been done. And yet there is a response and a burden of sin. Let me get these three points and you'll see where I'm going with this here today. Mm -hmm. As we see Judas at this particular point, even Judas says in verse number four, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Mm -hmm. And herein with these three points lies the burden of sin. First point is this. Oh, let me also clear you up on one thing. Some of you think that some sins are bigger than other sins. Mm -hmm. Like their little sins and their great sins. I don't think that that's a reality. I tried that logic myself. It's the way I've gotten away with looking in the mirror after I've done stupid stuff myself. I would say to myself, well, that was just a little sin. I, you know, I you know, didn't hurt nobody. I didn't hurt nobody. <laughs> sin is sin. It's the first thing I want you to know. Sin is sin. Hang on to that while we go forward with our points of the day. Sin is sin. And anything that is declared sin is going against the will and the word of God. Now, if you're new in Christ, how do you know what right is yet? There's something that will tell you. Let's look at these three points. Going forward with the understanding that there is a burden of sin. For one, there is something called guilt. I'm not talking about the guilt other people throw on you to make you feel ashamed of what you've done. I'm talking about the guilt in your heart where something speaks and says, I shouldn't have done that. I'm talking about that real small voice on the inside that's saying, not only should I not have done it, but I was hearing the voice telling me not to do it while I was doing it. Whether I... Whether I I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't. I should not have done those things. I should not have been in that space. I should not have. Guilt is healthy. That's my first point. Guilt is healthy. Now there are other folks who want to make you feel guilty for the things you've done. That's a whole different dynamic. You got folks like that. You cut them ducks loose because they can't fly too high. <laughs> other folks who want to make you feel guilty about what you've done are actually trying to excuse the fact that they probably got guilty of doing some stuff too. Right. I'm talking about the guilt that comes when you know that you have gone against your relationship, new or old, with God. Right. It's healthy when you hear that voice that says, shouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what happens. What happens on the flip side is when you don't hear that voice mm -hmm. that tries to guide you through better actions, to get you to making better choices, that's when you become a dangerous citizen. Mm -hmm. When you can rapidly do wrong, that's when you become the one that everyone needs to fear. When you can do the damage to other people, when you can steal, when you can pillage, when you can pull triggers, when you can do all of this and not feel any wrong whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And not feel any remorse whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There has to be a balance. And if you have invited Christ, even if you're new in your walk with Christ, mm -hmm. the reality is guilt is healthy. You ain't going to be better overnight. Mm -hmm. You're going to get better day by day. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, if you slip a little, just ask God for forgiveness. But it's knowing you slipped. That's what you knew you actually invited him in in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right now, I want you to look at somebody through your mask here in the church. Just look at somebody. See, you might feel guilty. Some of these folks don't have no guilt because they ain't invited to be in right in the first place. And everybody's trying to see how someone else is going to adjust to this issue of guilt. You've got to know that when you've gone contrary to the will of God, 
only thing your heart says is, shouldn't have done it. That's called guilt. And that's a good reaction. That means you know you've done something wrong to God. That means you know you've done something maybe wrong to somebody else. That means you know you've done something that just wasn't, it just didn't sit well with you. I just shouldn't have done that. So guilt is healthy. The next thing is, change is needed. Change is needed. If you find yourself feeling guilty about the deeds you do, maybe you need to make some changes. Maybe you're trying to grow beyond who you used to be, to becoming who you can be in Christ. Maybe you need to stop giving yourself the excuses for being less than and move to a better space. Maybe you need to realize that the changes are not going to come from up above. Sometimes the changes need to come from within. I got to get better. I got to do better. I'm better than that. I didn't need to say that. My friends, change is needed. It's my second point. And my third point simply is Submission is required. Submission is required. You've been walking for so many years doing your thing. Brother Judas, you've been conducting business. Maybe you've been keeping money as the treasurer for different other organizations. Maybe that was a part of his resume. And Brother Judas now comes into the fold as a disciple. He was there when Jesus was baptized by John, and he's been with Jesus for the last three years. Brother Judas knows how to keep the money. Mm -hmm. He knows how to keep the IRS off the organization's back. Mm -hmm. He knows how to deal with the 501C charter without getting everybody in trouble. Brother Judas knows the technical side of the business. Mm -hmm. And so Judas has done his part, but then he made the wrong move and decided that Jesus has got to go. Maybe Jesus, as a preacher, wasn't generating enough money. Maybe Jesus, like some preachers, kind of forgot to have the offering every once in a while, amen? And maybe they realized that before we shut these lights off, we got to get rid of that joker there. And maybe Jesus had done some things that rubbed Judas the wrong way, but he decided that he was going to sell out Jesus. One night he took, he took the he he took the cry scribes and the Pharisees, the Sanhedrins, and the Greek and the, even the Roman soldiers. He took them to Jesus there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Say that he is. Mm -hmm. And so then we find Judas having to realize that his deeds were done. He mm -hmm. felt guilty. He made a change by morning time and said, I should not have done that. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I want to repent of myself. They said, that's not our problem, because guess what? That repenting is between you and your God. Oh, yes. But here's where submission is required. Mm -hmm. If Judas had simply said, Lord, oh, I want to give my all to you. Yeah. Giving my all to you is what makes the difference, my friends. Other than that, you will always fight with the burden of sin. Mm -hmm. Other than giving you all and submitting, you will always find yourself trying to barter with God and Satan will have a lock on upsetting your Christian walk and sometimes getting in the way of your best moment by breaking your heart and letting you know you ain't all that special anyhow. See, here's the difference. Christ wants to lift you up. Satan wants to pull you down. Christ wants to change your life. Satan wants you to be just like you are. But here's where the scripture says it, and even the songwriter said it even best. When it comes down to trying to make changes to be right with God, I've got to do my part. I've got to give my life all over, and I've got to accept him as my Lord and Savior. And here's where the scriptures make it clear that the burden of sin means either I'm going to trust in the Lord and invite him into my life, or why would I even play this game at all? And so my friends, this is your day of reckoning. This is your day of change. Submission is the answer. If you've been straddling the fence but yet coming to church on Sunday, that's all right. Get in line because there are other people who are in the same boat. I want you to know right now that real change is needed for you to go where God has for you.
to go, for you to receive the blessings of God, for you to know the God of the universe is yours to call your own. Now is your time to decide I'm not going to be guilty. I'm not going to go back to going what I used to do and who I used to be. And I'm going to submit like I've never submitted before. Yeah. And today, 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 I offer Christ Ooh, to you. Yeah. 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 My letter by Christian experience as a candidate for baptism. Today, don't do it because somebody else pressured you. Don't do it because you think somebody else is, and also if you've done it in the past and and if you know you did it for all the other reasons, today, I sincerely offer Christ to you. By letter or by Christian experience or as a candidate for baptism, if there is one, come on. And let's keep this moment of silence right now. Play. Yeah. Now is your time. Think about your relationship Hey, Judas walked with Jesus, saw what Jesus could do, and still decided, I'm going to turn this man in. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not the most, well, I'll be the first to say, please be patient with me. Well, Because God is not through with me yet. All right, then. Every once in a while, I got to be like Paul. I got to bridle my tongue and my thoughts. And, and I do get angry about things in this world. I really do. I really do. But I got to sometimes know when to get out of my own way. Because I'm still a vessel of God. It has nothing to do with being the preacher. I mean, just being me. I'm still the vessel of God. Through which somebody needs to know that change can come for them too. You are that vessel. And if you just hit those roadblocks and you're just not sure, then I'm offering Christ to you. By letter or by Christian experience as a candidate for baptism. Come on. You can be forgiven. You can make the changes needed. But the submission you need to make is a decision you make today. Is there one? And even if you don't come forward, I know most of you here, if you've been on that walk and your relationship has gotten stale, and even if you've made some changes, and it hadn't been too good. And even if you made some choices. and they, eh, I'm just saying, Lord, forgive us. Mm -hmm. Make us whole again. Mm -hmm. Receive us as your people. All right. And help us to be an example to others mm -hmm. of your love, your mercy, and your grace. All right. And we're grateful, dear Lord, because the price you paid later on of their own Calvary mm -hmm. is what saves our wicked souls. Yeah, right. Receive us all this, we pray. Forgive us all, dear Lord, and as a church collectively, let us go back to serving you best. Mm -hmm. We submit to you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You might be seated. This gives us the template by which we go forward with our communion for the morning. For communion is not something that I want us to ever get to the point where we just take it lightly. Communion is where we stop to simply acknowledge the fact that the price that was paid on Calvary yeah. was the price of the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's why we celebrate here together in our communion experience. And so I'm going to ask that if you will, prepare your heart and your mind. I'm going to ask that if you will, uh, uh, deacons, let me have a set of gloves. We're going to go forward. If you will, deacons, let us prepare the table. We will... Let the mothers set us in the right direction. Thank you, Dean. If you have come to this communion experience and you've got a lot that's heavy, and I didn't pray enough for some of you, my issue with some of us is that you keep beating up on yourself. Well. How about the fact you can't fix you? You're just going to have to give it over to the Lord. All right. Hey, the songwriter said, I gave it over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you'll find it. He will work it out. Mm -hmm. Quit trying to fix these things. Quit trying to walk in these spaces. Guess what? You are okay, and it's time to let God have it. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord.
Then you can experience the joy of what this communion experience is all about. That he died on the cross for our sins. Mothers, if you will, please come and prepare the table. unto you. We ask to be cleansed. We ask to be forgiven. And we want to partake in this communion openly, lovingly. And dear Lord, let us feel you fresh and anew. Yeah. This is what we seek. In the <laughs> name of Jesus, let it all be to thy glory. Let every heart simply say amen. 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 Reverend Smith, if you want to join us, you're more than welcome. Bless you. I sure appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Church, let us stand. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I do? Yeah, let us stand. Come on. Yeah. Let's Lord have mercy. <laughs> Help him. Help him. If you would, be led from the rear. That's what I want to see. Somebody leading them from the rear. Come on around. Hey, man. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down The blood came streaming down The blood came streaming down For me Thank you. 
today, remove your mask. <laughs> don't think I haven't noticed that's something you don't end up doing to you. Yeah, Lord have mercy. And so now, let us prepare, let us take. And so it was on that faithful day when Jesus was with his disciples that he said, this is my body. Take, eat ye all of it. It is broken for the remission of your sins. Then he took the drink, the fruit of the vine, and he said, this is my blood shed for the remission of your sins. Take now, let us drink ye all of it. Amen. 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 Everybody say God bless you. God bless you. I will say we do want you to participate in our Christmas program that's going to be taking place, I believe, on, well, you get all that when you go to the meeting. Uh, I think the meeting is today, right? Isn't, it, isn't there a meeting today, Sister Carr? Isn't it today? You on today? No, sir. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Go and get your acting skills together. Uh, uh, you know me coming up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be coming in here acting like an, uh, supposed to be playing the part of an angel and acting like a shepherd. <laughs> Don't get the rules right. Amen. But, uh, but uh, that being said, we thank God for you. We thank God for each and every one of you, for those who are born in the month of December. Come forward. You know what I mean? That's a high That's a high Thank you. Month of December. Is this your birthday? Well, come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Well, come on down. I'll celebrate with you. And let's celebrate together. I've got to celebrate with you.
Yeah, she said, yeah, 63. She said, we didn't have a word of prayer. Your mama told me. But, <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> Dear God, we thank you for those who are born here in the month of December. This is a month of celebration where the mindset is to celebrate the birth of the Messiah. But at the same time, we're grateful for these blessed babies who've been born in this month, who have been a blessing to us here at the Greater New Light Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you for them. We thank you for what they provided, for what they give to our worship experience. Yeah. Now, dear Lord, I'm asking that you give back to them unproportionately the love of healing, health, and resources. Bless them financially. Surround them with love and let them know how much we appreciate them. Yeah. I'm talking about that pressed down, shaking together, running over kind of love that others can be blessed by it as oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for these December babies. Bless them and keep them. Let, on their special day, let them thank you in a special way for allowing them to be and to have this one more year. We yeah. thank you. We praise you. Let us say, Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to Before the day is over with Earl Brown, uh, could you do me a favor? Come take the pictures of these sets of twins born in the month of December. Oh, that's right, they're triplets, that's right. The brother passed some years ago. Uh, yeah, they, but I want you all, you, you all who came out same age, come on and take this picture. Yeah, yeah, same day, same age. Whatever that, you know, I was <laughs> Take that picture. These are uh, multiple blessings in families. Provided by the sisters here, right directly for the morning worship. Refreshment and gifts. Flowers and gifts. Just gifts. And gifts. Hey, man. That went better to receive them. They got gifts. Hey, man. Thank God. Thank God. Hey, man. All hearts and minds clear. I just love all of them. I'm really, I'm borderline about to get in trouble, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> stop right now. All I know is I love these sisters. I love them, I love them, I love them. If any of those gifts are edible, check the expiration date. <laughs> Regardless of it, I mean, I, and I don't know how y'all do it, but I'm just grateful and I thank God for you. We love you. Thank you, December babies. Uh, congratulations, Mother Swain, and for all of you, for all of you, just know today is a good day to restart. Hey, you don't, you don't have to, and, and actually I didn't tell you all the end of the story. See, in Matthew, Judas then hangs himself. Well, One of the other texts says he throws himself off the wall and it says that his bowels burst open. And so that's why I didn't really deal with that because there's too much division in how this has been written. But all we know is Judas took his life. The grief and the burden hurt him so bad for what he had done. So guilt is healthy, but you can't live in guilt. That's why you have to move to making the changes needed and also knowing that when you submit, that's where the forgiveness really comes in. Because mm -hmm. I'm a living witness. Mm -hmm. I have sin. Mm -hmm. But I'm so grateful mm -hmm. that he is a forgiver of sins. Mm -hmm. And I have tested this reality to know he will forgive you again and again and again. Because maybe I have sinned again and again and again. But I know for a fact that he can remove that stain. Come on. If you just let him. Amen. 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 We pray we talk to your heart today. Thank you, choir, for working with us. Amen. That was a good test today. Yes, sir. Amen. Test. Yes, sir. That was a good test. Let us know we need to go and get a choir directly. Amen. <laughs> 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 
Melania person. Uh, Melania person. Uh, all hearts and minds clear. Yeah. Don't forget there's some blessings for you in the fellowship hall. Take advantage of such. Mm -hmm. And now unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling and falling to the all wise and mighty God. Mm -hmm. Be power and glory henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all sing three times. Oh. Oh.